and we are missing our, our beloved Dr. Sonia, who is uh, down vacationing in Mexico. So we actually don't feel too bad for her. Uh, not at and all. you are not at all, not at all. And hopefully, you already know that you're listening to the Women in Wellness podcast. And I'm pretty excited about this topic today because I think it is. It's one of those things that is affecting people so adversely and they have no idea. They, they have no idea. Like nobody ever thinks that their laundry detergent could be the reason they're not losing weight. And you know, when you first, right. And when you first hear that, you're like, well, that's stupid. How could that be? But when, uh, you know, Dr. Caitlin and I just sat here for a couple of minutes and went through and came up with 13 different areas in your house that are giving off toxins. And if you don't change them, will eventually affect your health. So our plan today is to go through those 13 items and give you guys some really uh, concrete ways to change them or make you aware of them, tell you our favorite products and have a really good discussion about it. So uh, before I get into the 13, anything you want to say about this toxic to uh, topic, Dr. Caitlin? Yeah, it's absolutely crazy because truthfully, I've been um, very interested in trying to minimize both mine, my husband's, mm -hmm. my dog's toxic load. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just crazy because you try and try and try to like get the most natural things and it can turn out though that what you're using is actually very damaging to either hormones or whatever it may be. And yeah. just a little story. Um, so we're hoping to have kids soon. And I was going through, cause we're going to talk about an app um, that we both love and use on a regular basis that makes it much easier to buy um, cleaning products and beauty products and just you name it. But I was going through our stuff scanning and I was scanning my husband's like styling mousse kind of thingy and it came back that it was a nine out of 10 and that's bad. Okay. That's really bad. Like you want less than three. Out of his hands. <laughs> oh my, I threw it out. He, the next day goes, where's my stuff? And I'm like, um, it causes infertility issues. So <laughs> that's in the trash, but oh it's absolutely crazy. And Never would you think that like your styling hair stuff could cause yeah. such problems with hormones and possible infertility or really bad menstrual cycles or whatever, weight loss resistance, you name it. So I'm super excited to, um, you know, bring light to some of these things that most people probably don't ever think about. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you yeah. want to start with? Um, okay. So let's start with, uh, actually, you know what, before I start into it, you know what you, you made me think of is that you and I both have dogs that got uh, cancer. And I, we did the same thing where I was like, how did my dog get cancer? And I realized, oh my God, it's in my household environment that they were, the dog was licking and it triggered a gene and it was, a, our dog was a Rottweiler and then boom, they, she ended up getting cancer. And that made me look at my internal environment so much different so oh I know and it was sad my my great Dane um got fibrosarcoma so it's not even that's not a common cancer for great Danes osteosarc is common but for yeah. a three-year-old Dane to get cancer the vets for a month couldn't figure out what was going on and it wasn't until I pushed that they biopsied that they're like yeah she has aggressive cancer and I was like what I'm like where how did this even happen because she eats organic, grain-free, you know, I did have her on the best kibble at before the cancer. Then I switched her to hundred percent organic raw. Um, and doing that, I was able to keep her alive, healthy, well, healthy for a cancer survivor for 16 months instead of eight months. But, you know, if I would have known half of this stuff before, I probably wouldn't have ended up in the situation with a really sick dog. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. I feel like I can't emphasize enough to people that your dog is, and our vet told us, your dog licks the ground, your dog licks your couch, the dog dick licks your backyard. Like, so look around your environment and see where those chemicals are. And what, what was, right, yeah, like, and what was shocking to me was like, oh my God, and my kids are sitting on that couch and my kids are playing in that yard. Well, so if that happens, to the dog what's happening to them and it's it just it's mind-boggling so so let's start the first one is household cleaners let's start with cleaners 
Okay, so cleaners. I use, actually, so I try and use Dr. Bronemeyer for everything mm -hmm. if I can. Um, and the reason I like to use them is they're extremely clean. Like there's almost nothing in it. And when I first switched it over, so this is our um, soap, like our sink soap for washing dishes and cups and all that kind of stuff. My husband was complaining that it's not sudsy enough. So it's not getting clean enough. That's not true. I made it a little more potent last time because all you do is you dilute it a little bit with water. Um, you don't need much. And it's amazing. Like it, there's no smell, which is fantastic because I hate those um, like artificial yep. smells kind of thing. Um, yep. So we, we love that for our or dish, dish stuff. But then the thing that I use for my household cleaner for like my Windex, cause I don't use Windex, I use um, Thieves actually. So I use the Thieves household oh. cleaner. Um, so Thieves is from Young Living, but you can also get like Doterra's On Guard and you dilute it down into like glass spray bottles, which is what I do. And you can make different potencies. So if you want like glass cleaner i'll add a little bit of vinegar and no streaks no chemicals no nothing um if i want heavy duty stains so like the dog has an accident on my rug then i add more to this um you know just to get rid of it so that's that's pretty much what i use what do you use yeah i mean we you and i were talking about this before like we switched everything over as far as our household cleaners a long time ago mm -hmm. um and it's all seventh generation kind mm -hmm. of uh, uh, sprays. So I, and, and I'd have to go back and, and re, regrade, regrade it to make sure that they didn't change anything. But I'm still here, I want to go grab one more thing. Okay. Yeah. But most recently I actually started doing, I wanted to clean my rugs. So I got a steam cleaner from Costco that was really cool. And it came with a very toxic uh, a substance and I'm like well that doesn't why would I I'm not gonna put toxins on my rug that my kids are gonna roll around on so I did apple cider vinegar and lemon and that worked amazing so then I started thinking where else in my house could I do that so I'm now doing on the tile in the shower apple cider vinegar lemon and baking soda um, and that is amazing it's so simple and so much cheaper well, and a great thing for carpet. So I have like a shag rug um, because my Dane that had cancer, we amputated her leg to prolong her life. Mm -hmm. um, and living in a hardwood house, she had no traction. So our like shag carpet rug kind of thing stinks like terribly. Um, but we would use baking soda and I would add essential oils to it. So you just add essential oils to the baking soda, whatever smell you like. I like pine typically or lemons kind of thing. And you just let it sit. So you sprinkle it on your rug. You let it sit for an hour or two and then you vacuum it up and it smells amazing, like brand new clean and there's no, no chemicals in it. Uh, that's interesting. I'll have to do that because I'm such a fan of essential oils right now. I'm like, I love we them. have it going in our office. I I put it on every day. So I, I love that idea of using it in the carpet cleaner. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. And it does it does a great job. You know, just make sure that your baking soda is aluminum free and yep. you're good to go. And it's so simple. Yeah. Like it's super cheap to do it that way too. The um, other thing about the baking soda I like is it creates a little friction. So it, like anything that you're trying to get up, you know, it just really makes it, it's a really nice additive to, to a cleaning material. Well, it's great so. for, you know, like cookie sheets too, when it gets that like sticky film on oh, it. Oh, that's you a great idea. You make like a little paste and let it sit with a little bit of vinegar and you can add lemon and it Aww. takes it right up. Oh my gosh, I'm like taking notes because I have a baking sheet that I got to do that with. Okay. Awesome. I have, I have to do that with one of mine. My, it, uh, I don't know that I'll necessarily get the turmeric and curry stain out of it, but hey. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you might be getting a little extra turmeric each time. You never know. So, um, okay. So now, and this is in no particular order that we're going through these. I mean, Dr. Caitlin and I just free, we are just free thinking like what is in our environment. So let's move to makeup. Um, what are your thoughts on makeup? 
So makeup is so, so, so toxic. And I tell my women all the time, you know, men better appreciate that most women put almost 400 chemicals on their face just to look good for them as well as ourselves. It makes us feel good. But there's a lot of crappy makeup out there like L'Oreal and Maybelline and, you know, all of those things. Sorry, guys. You're loading yourself up with lead and mercury and aluminum and all sorts of stuff. And your skin is your biggest organ. Guess what you're doing? Sucking it in. So um, same thing with nail polish. Do you know how hard nail polish is? I know. I know. I stopped going. It makes me sad. But I stopped going because I just didn't want that sitting on there. Same thing with hair. Like I used to dye my hair. Thank goodness I don't have a lot of gray. But I used to dye my hair and then I was like, no, I know there's natural hair products out there, but I just was like, forget it. It's, you know, I'd rather be alive and healthy and thriving than be, you know, work on my, the outside beauty of me. Like, I feel like there's other ways you can do it. Um, You don't have to be so reliant on the chemicals. Well, and the other thing too, um, if you fix the inside, the outside does better. Yeah. So people ask me yeah. all the time, you know, what foundation do you use? I don't use foundation. Yeah. I, I don't touch the stuff. I feel icky when I have it on. So if I'm doing like a photo shoot for work or if I'm doing a commercial and they have to put that, um, that gross cakey makeup on so you don't look washed out on TV, yeah, yeah. I feel terrible. I feel absolutely terrible and I feel so made up. I should actually post a picture of, what I look like made up and what I actually look like because it's ridiculous. Um, But what type of makeup? So women are going to wear makeup. They always are. I I wear makeup. I don't wear tones, but I wear makeup. What makeup do you use and what do you recommend? Well, so we switched over to osmosis. That's Mm -hmm. what um, in my office, we do a bulk order and, you know, it's all women in here and we just basically once a month, what does everybody need? And I really like the osmosis stuff. Have you, have you used it? So I've used them at all of the seminars that they've been at. And I just haven't, I'm a procrastinator. I just haven't put an order in. Yeah. Yeah. And we just, because we do it as a, as a group, it's easy. Like, um, but I'm not married to it. I mean, there's other ones like, um, before that, I was going to Whole Foods and getting the bare minerals and uh, and the mineral fusion um, is pretty good. Yeah, mineral fusion. And then I had a friend who was beauty counter rep, and that's great too. So there's a lot of really good ones. What I think is important is that there are some keywords like your like people will tell me. I went and got a facial the other day, and the woman I asked her what kind of products she was using, and she said all of our products um, are. Um, have to follow European standards. So, so European standards for skincare products are much more stringent than American. And that is like a code word for these are, are less toxic, higher quality. Have you heard that before? I have. And I am bad. I don't usually go for facials and things like that. Um, I'm 48. I'm 48. I, it's time. You got some time. I, the thing is, is I just... I don't make time for that. I I probably should because it would probably make me feel really good. But I agree, you know, and I think part of the reason that I don't do those kinds of things like the uh, facials and the chemical peels and all that is I don't know what's in that. And I just don't like putting something on me when I'm not entirely certain how it's going to affect me internally hormone wise. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I think that's a great, a great tip is make sure that it's um, like European grade because if it's not, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about doing that then at that point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that, um, you know, I've walked the the path of cancer with so many patients and it's so frustrating when you get a bad diagnosis and you realize that something like the makeup you've been putting on every single day has been throwing your estrogen levels off, causing you to be estrogen dominant. And now you have can't like oh like oh it's so frustrating and it's so it's such a simple fix and there's so many good solutions out there so I think that's the the if any if there's any takeaway I want from this particular episode is that there the things you're doing daily like putting makeup on those are the you got to get those right you got to get those toxins under control otherwise the bioaccumulation is what will destroy your health 
And yeah. you said it, you know, people don't really think of it that way, right? So think of how many times you're putting something on you other than your clothes, which by the way, your clothes are washed in your laundry detergent. Um, and yeah. we'll talk about my laundry detergent and how I just about lost it last week when I looked into it more, but um, you got to be really careful and really selective as to what it is that you choose to um, expose yourself to on a daily basis. Yeah. So um, the osmosis line, great. Mineral fusion is great. Um, yeah. Pure is another really good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, isn't there one called 100% juice or something like that? Um, I don't know enough about it, but you know what? I think um, you and I talked about this last time. Um, the two apps that I think are really helpful for people is Think Dirty, and then um, there's a oh, there's the the cosmetics, the Safe Cosmetics Coalition, um, Skin Deep. Oh, that's a good one. I use yeah. I use two apps for. Um, like my cleaners and things like that, because sometimes it's on one, but not another. So the think dirty and then it's healthy living. Uh, yeah. See, they're skin deep. It's so I think, what oh, they, yeah. I think what they did with that one is they've combined, it's the EWG. And I think they yep. combined uh, food and beauty products into all one. So that's great. Mm -hmm. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And then this is the, the think dirty one. Um, yep. Let's see go. what it looks like though. It's that black app. Yeah. So now what I love about the think dirty one is it'll give me, it gives me a score, but then it gives me three readings. It tells me, um, is, is it going to cause reproductive health? Is, is it carcinogenic or is it a, an allergen? And sometimes I'll get a really high score on my favorite product, but it's an allergen. So I'm like, I'm not worried about, you know, that for me. So I don't have as much of a, of a challenge doing it. So I like how it breaks it down like that. Um, so I just scanned my, my Perfect. body wash. Perfect. So I use Dr. Bronemeyer, um, Dr. Broner's, um, this one's the peppermint one and it comes back as a one. So awesome. that's really good. Like that's really low. Um, and it doesn't really give me anything else for yeah, that. Show, me, show it to me again. I'll show you because there's nothing. It's it, the bars are so little. Um, so yeah, so on here, yes. you'll see the yeah. three, um, it says, uh, you know, carcinogenic developmental and reproductive toxicity, allergies and, um, yeah. immunotoxins. And so there's nothing that lights up there, but let me show you my laundry detergent that I thought was being so good, all plant derived, you know, not tested on animals. It's wow. a nine. Wow. And it's then, a reproductive. I know. I just <laughs> died when I saw that. I was like, what the heck? So this is really good. It gives you a great idea of what the heck is going on. So this brand, it's all plant derived. It's all like essential oils and you name it, but it comes back not good for you. So this is wow. getting tossed. Wow. Um, and I won't be using that anymore. So I got to go to the store today and find, go through with my little app, scanning a whole bunch of laundry detergent. Yeah, and it takes some time. I think that that's the one thing I would say is when you first are scanning stuff, you'll spend some time at the store. But then once you find your stuff, you won't do it as much anymore. But it's yeah. definitely... Yep. And you got to, so what, I guess the big thing that I want to say is you just got to be careful because even seventh generation. So I grabbed one of the, um, like dishwashing detergents and it comes back at a five. Oh, so let's see why. Allergens. So, huh? Allergens. Yeah, so, interesting. You know, depending on what your allergies are, what you're suffering with or from, yeah. right? You just got to be careful. So um, just like you said, Dr. Mindy, if allergens really aren't a big issue for you, you're not suffering with like eczema, hives, you know, you don't have that histamine reaction, things like that. Maybe that's not going to be as problematic for you. Um, right. But you just got to figure out what is it that you're willing to, um, to deal with versus not deal with. So I love that app because it makes it so much easier. I don't have to read 
I still read the ingredients, don't get me wrong, but I don't have to like Google, like, what is this? Well, the ingredients on the, on some of these household products, who knows what they are? They're, they're chemicals. So it's hard to tell if what kind of chemicals. So yeah, right. totally agree. But so, okay, next those. one is hair products. So what are your thoughts on hair products? Hair products are hard. Um, and you know, I thought that I was doing an amazing job with my hair products. Um, so Andalou wasn't bad. It, it comes back at about a three. Okay. Um, so it's not, it's not terrible. Um, but it's obviously not as good as my one. Right. And then I heard, you know, amazing things about a crew. And some of them come back as like a one, some come back as a three. So I think it just depends on what it is that you're getting, you know, are you getting the volumizer? Are you getting the ultra hydrating? Are you getting the clarifying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, these... have, you, have you tried Giovanni? That's one of my favorite. I get it at Whole Foods. I have. And guess what? So that hair product that Niles was using that came back at, yeah, so they're all, di I have scanned each one, and for that exact thing you're talking about, depending on what it's trying to do. Right, you just got to scan them. Yeah, so we use the shampoo, my favorite is the shampoo and conditioner that's a cucumber, it's in a green bottle. Mm. But I, yeah, they're the same shampoo, just whatever they were trying to do, volumize or replenish, then the toxic load change. Right, yeah. and um, I'm like you, I don't dye my hair, I just... It's too much work. I got. I. I don't have the time to make an appointment to go in and get it redone all the time. And there's nothing drives me personally more crazy on me when, like, if I were to have like roots or whatever, like, I'd have to go get it touched so often that it wouldn't be worth it for me. Um, but what I was gonna say about that is um, the the shampoo specific for like uh, color treated hair when I've scanned them have typically come back more toxic than oh, their counterparts. So I don't know why, but that's something that um, you all should just be aware of and scan yeah. to see what it comes back as. But yeah, I like I, the I before, I've like taught my daughter how to scan products and it's like, it's actually kind of gamifies it. It's sort of fun. It is. And then, you know, just rescan because sometimes they change their, um, you know, their ingredients, their formula. And so what was fine might not always be fine. So, you know, I just scan it like real fast and be like, oh, yep, still good. Or, oh, crap, what happened here? And then I'll spend more time trying to figure out an, an, another option or another solution. Um, the other interesting thing, in my town, there's a lot of organic hair salons popping up oh. where you can go and get your hair colored with an organic. I know, and they're packed. I don't know why more people don't figure this out, that people want this, but they're packed. So I do know, you know, I've got a lot of friends that are graying, and they don't want to be gray, and so they're kind of stuck with that hard dilemma of what to do. Yeah. So that would be what I would do, is I would go to, to an organic salon. Absolutely. Or um, there's other options like you can use like henna's um, mm -hmm. from what I've been told are far less toxic okay. or using um, like black teas and things like that. If you just want to give yourself a little change in color, I don't know it would cover grays, but there's always options. You just got to look right. and see what, what's available to you. Well, that's, that's the beauty of being a woman, right? I mean, we have like, especially when it comes to our hair, there's a lot of different things you can do. So yeah, it's totally agree. Okay, speaking of being a woman, this, this is an interesting one, hygiene. So I'm not gonna lie, I, for years I was doing tampons and I was like, okay, you know, I just kind of didn't think about the, the long-term effects of it. I did start to use the, the natural ones at, um, Whole Foods, but then every once in a while, if I had to go grab a Tampax or something, I would. And then I read a study where they talked about how, think about suppositories. Like when they do vaginal suppositories, they put medicine up into the vaginal area because it's so porous in there that it can pull in um, anything that sits inside of there. And I was like, holy crap, my, my tampon is like, is chlorinated if you don't get the unchlorinated ones yes. 
And that freaked me out. And then I just, at that point, I stopped and I switched to pads. But I, you know what is a game changer for me is the Diva Cup. I was going to say. Yeah, it's a total game changer. I, and I'm, I'm like, my periods are winding down. And I'm like, God, I wish I had known about this 20 years ago. It's such yeah. a game changer. So um, I, I agree completely. I think it's a phenomenal way to go about it. You've got to be careful, though, because um, other companies are coming up with similar products, right, other than the Diva Cup. And so you just got to be careful where the product's coming from and what it's being made out of. So I would be very cautious about buying a cheaper version of it yeah. that comes out of China or something like that, because who knows what it's made out of. And if it's plastics and chemicals, it, it, that's actually worse than using an organic unbleached tampon. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and that's true. I mean, that's natural and unbleached. Um, the Diva Cup says BPA uh, uh, free on it, on the outside. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's good to know. I didn't know there were competitor companies to the Diva Cup. Yeah, there are. And so some of them come out of China. So, you know, instead of spending $35 on a cup, you can get it for free, just pay shipping and handling, which is $15. You know what I mean? So $15 versus 35 where I know what, it's, what I'm getting, I just, I'm not messing with it. Um, plus it's a one-time fee, right? Like you reuse it. So it, it actually saves you a ton of money instead of spending $6 for 20 tampons that you go through, you know, one and a half every two months kind of thing or whatever it is. So right. huge, yeah. huge money saver too. Yeah. But I, I cannot emphasize enough the the putting a chlorinated tampon, you're better off using a pad, but putting a chlorinated tampon inside the vagina is no bueno. Like that over year after year after year, you're going to have some serious chemical uh, toxicity. And you got to be careful about the pads too, because if you think about it, if the pads aren't um, chlorine free and unbleached and organic, what you're doing is when they get moist, they off gas. So anytime that the pad absorbs, not even, um, you know, the discharge of the blood, but if it, you know, just gets a little bit moist for, because guess what, you know, ladies, it, it gets warm there. Right. It does. You're, you're off gassing and then you're reabsorbing all that stuff. So it's really important, really, really like if you're going to make one change with anything that we're saying, start with your feminine hygiene products. Start there. But a great alternative, I just want to say, other than buying, you know, like seventh generation or Italy or Italy, Target has these organic chlorine free pads made from Italy that are super affordable, super affordable, like 42 pads for less than six bucks. Wow. They, they make a, a tampon too. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to go organic chlorine free. But another great alternative is um, it's Charlie Banana. So um, this company also makes um, diapers, like cloth diapers for babies, oh. and it's um, organic. They're reusable, so they're like, they come like this. Okay. You open them up. It's 100% oh. organic uh, cotton, and then you just clip it under your underwear, and then you throw it in the wash after, and... Easy peasy. It's just and they, like cloth diapers. Yeah, I they don't really stain. Yeah. yeah, and they're actually really comfortable. So oh, I use. Order. Where'd you get it? Thrive Market. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, but I really like these, especially when you're at home. You know, like obviously, if you're traveling and you're menstruating, okay, probably not, right? But um, it's a great option. Um, for, it's reusable, good for the environment too. Yes. So I, when I saw this, I dove in, and it's actually very reasonable. I think I paid I don't know, fifteen. Let's say fifteen dollars. I don't think I paid fifteen dollars, but you get three of them, and it, you get a little packet thingy to put it in once it, you know, you've used it, and then you throw it in the wash with whatever, and it all comes out, and it's it's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, now you've taught me three things. I love it. I'm, this is, I'm enjoying this as much as it's fun to share. 
and I agree with you. It can be overwhelming. A lot of people really get stuck with like, oh my God. Like I, you know, as we sit and coach people, I'm sure you get this where it's like ju just getting people to be aware that they've got chemicals in their food is such a huge step that you could listen to a show like this and go, oh my God, now I have to think about all the chemicals in my house. Yeah. Um, and I do think it's just a process. And I love what you're saying, like start with your hygiene. I think that's important. That's probably the most important one, no doubt. So um, so I love it. And then the other thing you said that was interesting is tar uh, check out Target and Walmart. They are trying to compete with Whole Foods. And so they are carrying more and more uh, natural products at better prices. And Costco too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I buy a lot of, um, so I'm like you, if I have a farmer's market that I can go to buy local, organic, fresh, like pick the day before, hundred yeah. percent do it hands down. Um, but when I don't have that option, cause living, you know, North of you, we don't get, uh, yeah. you know, vegetables all year. You don't, round. You don't, you don't have fresh, uh, strawberries all the time. <laughs> no, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, but I will go to Costco and I'll buy, um, you know, organic vegetables from Costco. I, I make my dog's food now and they get organic, um, my dog, my dog's food now, um, organic vegetables from Costco. So, awesome. you know, it's a great money saver. You're still getting organic. There, there's so many different ways that you can um, save on and live on a budget, but still do it healthy. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, and if you do the Charlie Banana thing and the Diva Cup, you're like, it's all reusable. So that's really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. Next thing. So that's hygiene. The next thing is indoor and I, I'm putting it, I'm calling it indoor air. And I, in that, I'm going to say mold. So, this so what do you do fun. for indoor air? <laughs> well, okay. I'll tell you what, um, I live in an old house and I haven't had it tested yet, so I probably should. Uh, the Erm have you done the Ermi test in your home? I haven't because we rent right now. So we're okay. only two years into Seattle, um, well, Seattle area, and um, the market here is crazy, and I honestly don't know where I want to live yet. So we're renting, and we also live in an old house. So I'll give some tips as to what I do when you're renting um, right. that you can make sure your environment is still clean as you possibly can be um, without spending the thousands of dollars on, you know, purify, like air purifiers and water systems and things like that. Yeah. So uh, we have, we have plants. We have the, Na have you gone to the NASA website has plants that actually start to hook onto the chemicals in your house. And um, have you seen no. that? There's, no, there's I like a go look at oh, yeah, there's plants. There are plants that will draw, will purify your air and draw out the toxins from the air. And it's NASA is the one that, that put it out. And you just type in indoor air purifying plants and then put NASA, and they have a list of about 10 different plants. So we've been slowly putting plants everywhere. Um, we also, we live in California, so I open the doors all the time to try to get fresh air in and out. But um, that's pretty much what we've done. Um, and one of the categories we're going to talk about is furniture. You know, when we bring new furniture in, we actually let it sit outside so there's no outgassing. So we try to do things like that, but the plants is a really easy one. That's a great idea. I've never done that. And I'm actually going to go look at that later today and see what plant, what are some of the plants that I can get for, um, but, but also for the office. Yeah. You know, those spidery ones that kind of have like, they come down and then they've got like a little ball on the end. I think they're maybe called a spider plant. They're one of them. So yeah, yeah go look at it. I will. I have a hard time with plants in the Pacific Northwest. I got huge trees all around me, so I don't have a whole lot of direct sunlight. So I need things that um, need low sunlight to survive here. Ah, okay. Okay. I'm sure you can find some. I'm sure I can. <laughs> so what do you do then for, um, so great um, when you said, you know, leave your furniture, mattresses, couches, things like that outside, let them off gas. So let them breathe. How long do you let them sit outside for before you bring them in? 
Well, in a perfect world, 24 hours, you know, and I kind of do a little sniff test. Do I smell it still? Um, but, and if the, if it's going to rain, I mean, by you, that's a little less practical. It depends on the time of the year, those kind of things. So usually about 24 hours, um, I'll just put it out and just let it And And every couch I've bought, I bought, I bought three of them in the last five years have, and mattresses smell horrible, horrible. There is something that, and then the other thing I do during that, that time is I take more bind, more bind and more cyto. And yeah. so and I, Cido is easy to get in, even though my kids are teens, you know, I'll just tell them like, hey guys, I put a little bottle of Cido Detox out and I'll say, hey, new, new, we just got a new living room couch. Uh, you guys are sitting on it. I'm sure you can smell it. Just every time you walk past, put a couple drops of Cido in your mouth. Yep. That's a, a great um, way to try and balance it out. And Cido, for those of you that don't yeah. know, for Cido and Bind. They go in and they bind toxins in your body and they hold on to them really, really tight so that you excrete them. So they're not a loose binder like Corella and um, some of the other like cilantro. Yeah, cilantro. Those will go and stir things up, but they don't necessarily mean that your body can eliminate them. They usually release them elsewhere. So um, yeah. the three of us, so Dr. Mindy, Dr. Sonia, and I love Cyto and um, bind. Um, I always have a stock in my house and I always bring it when I travel because I never know what type of hotel room I'm going to be in or anything. So. Yeah. And bind, bind is like, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but bind is my favorite anti hangover uh, um, resource or, or tool. You know, like I was in Europe a bunch last summer and you go out, you're out with friends, you drink a little too much, come home, boop, couple of binds, you wake up I'm feeling amazing the next day. My so. sister, if she listens to this, is probably going to kill me, but she was doing the Whole30 for all of January and she usually eats pretty clean. She's grain-free, dairy-free usually because she has a really bad um, reaction to it, but she had one of her really good friend's bachelorette parties Saturday night and I was like, ask dad if he has any bind left and she's like what's that and i was like they're little black pills you want a couple of them trust me she forgot and didn't feel so great sunday morning uh, she's like, oh, i should have asked i'm like you should have it's should've. amazing it's amazing so so yes yeah. switch to dry farm wines and then you don't have that right right well that's what we do in the house yes. but at europe was great because europe tends to have less less toxic wines but um but Bind is amazing. Bind and Cido, they're both. And those are the moments that I go, okay, I can't completely control this situation. I'm going to be exposed. Like, I, what if you're in a work environment and they change out all the furniture in a work environment? Or I've been in hotels where they put me in a room where that was freshly painted. And that's when I pull out my Bind and my Cido. Because I'm, I'm that person where I'll go, Can I, do you have another room available? Yeah. If they do, then I move. If they don't, then you're right. I'm taking bind and cyto and I'm drinking yeah. lots of water to try and flush everything out. But you, you do the best that you can. Right. So um, a lot of people, um, they want their house to smell fresh, right? Uh. And what they do is they do those plug-ins. Yes, they're horrible. Or <laughs> candles. And oh, like, yes. this is bad. Yes. And yes. we all love a good smelling home. I do. Yes. What, what do you use instead of those? Okay, so I'm again a huge oil fan. So we have two diffusers in our office. We have diffusers at home. Um, my kids have diffusers in their rooms. We're doing oils all the time. Um, and it just, the oils are so effective. Those air fresheners should be put out of business. They are toxic. They are, if I walk into somebody's house that has that, I, I am, I can start sneezing. Like I have to leave. I can't sit in there. I agree. I agree. Or, um, oh. it, have you ever gone into an Uber car where they have like, oh, uh, the fresheners yeah. into the vents and then they got the fresheners on the and you're just gagging. You're like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. Yeah. You can use, so just like you, I use oils all the time for everything from actual cleaning. So like citronella, not citronella, um, like lemon will take um, marks off walls. So if your kids draw on walls and things like that, or your leather couches, it'll take it off. Um, but you throw it in a diffuser and you don't need much, like a couple drops and it covers 
like a huge room. Yeah. So we always put lavender and sometimes I'll put pine in our diffuser before we wow. go to bed just to. Oh, you know what? You know what I've been doing lately is I put lavender on my chest before I go to bed and it's now kind of gotten on my pillow. And it's, and so then I, now I just get into bed and it smells like lavender. It's really nice. Isn't it nice? We have uh, patients that have brought us um, fresh lavender, so I dried it out. So we have fresh, well, dried out lavender now um, beside our beds on our bedside stand. So there's so many different ways that you can um, change the smell of your place without using toxins. But yeah, those, those plugins and a lot of candles are very toxic. What are your thoughts on the soy candles though? Oh, I don't know about the soy candles, but I remember for a long time, I don't, there were uh, candles that were made in Mexico were found to give off lead into the air. And that there was, that was a specific uh, ingredient they were able to measure. And so I kind of stopped doing candles after a while when I found oils. So, yep. and we even have some of those, <laughs> this sounds horrible, but of the ones that turn on like a light, like a, a light bulb, because we just do oils to smell good, or we get the non-fragrance candles. And that's a good point. Um, I don't use perfume. My husband doesn't use cologne anymore. Like we tossed all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, and we use essential oils now. So yeah. um, I'll use like Lang Lang. Um, it's a really pretty floral, like feminine kind of smell. Um, if I feel like I'm kind of stinky, like if it was a day of travel or um, whatever it may be, but essential oils are a great replacement for a whole bunch of stuff from like colognes and deodorants to making your place smell really pretty. So I just did, this is on a total side note. I just did a, um, a, a live event for my, uh, my community called forever young. And I started studying the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain that um, is related to Alzheimer's and dementia. And I ended up down like a, a rabbit hole of information on what stimulates that part of the brain. Well, it turns out that the olfactory nerve goes up into the hippocampus and can stimulate the hippocampus, which is what stimulates the olfactory nerve, smells. Yep. So I went to all my doTERRA people, you know, patients that are doTERRA reps or young living reps, and I was like, hey, there has to be a study out there on on the prevention of dementia and alzheimer's because of using these oils that's what they said they were like it hasn't been done yet but the physiology is there if you're stimulating non-stop every day the olfactory nerve in a very positive way and it in return stimulates the part of the brain that deadens in alzheimer's it sure seems like a constant stimulation of it would be important don't you think yeah, especially when you said like the uplifting smells. So a lot of like the energizing uplifting smells are those like citrusy ones, right? So um, I will not use that right before bed. If you want to like pick yeah. me up to like clean your house or whatever, yeah. throw in some lemon, some orange, some grapefruit, some lime, whatever, um, and that'll get you going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, and we've, we've talked about, there's so many different oil companies out there. You do got to be careful though, especially if you're going to put it on you, um, the quality of the oil. So doTERRA is great. Young Living's great. I can say that I have an account with both of them. I don't sell it. I use it personally because I love it so much, but I like them. I like the companies for different reasons. So I'll use certain oils from one. I'll use certain oils from another. Um, I think wellness mama really likes Oh, what is it called? Plant. Uh, it'll come to me. It's a plant one that you can order online. You don't, I don't think you have to have a membership. Oh, okay. through, um, I'll, I'll look it up and then I'll post it underneath um, the podcast and I'll yeah, post yeah. it on my Facebook page. Yeah, the Facebook group. I was thinking I, as you were talking, post some of the ones you like from Young Living because I don't know enough about oh. Young Living and I'd love to know what I don't, I have my favorites in doTERRA but I'd be curious and they do are both great companies. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah. Um, awesome. Sure. Okay. Let's go to your next, I'm going to say your favorite subject. Well, I'm going to call it your favorite subject. The mouth. Uh, it, it is one of my favorite <laughs> subjects. Um, and I'll dive more into it. So you know how you go into rabbit holes? My gosh, I dove into this rabbit hole a year and a half ago and I haven't come out yet. 
Um, it's just crazy where your mouth and how your mouth is totally connected to everything. Like, um, it can cause heart attacks. It can cause diabetes. It can cause autoimmune disease. It can cause infertility. It can cause, um, issues with brain and like memory and you name it. So the mouth, okay, what do I use? Well, this is the toothpaste and I'm sure you use it too. It's called Revitin. My and favorite. the reason we use it is because it actually doesn't kill bad bacteria. We don't want that. Right. What we want to do is we want to create an environment where the good bacteria flourish. And so this toothpaste is more of um, like a probiotic for your mouth than it is an antibiotic. Um, so I love it. And since using it, my teeth feel so super oh, clean. Amazing, oh right? It feels like you're, you walked out of the dentist's office. There's yep. no plaque. My teeth feel incredible. And everybody says that. I have hygienists that look at me like, no, I've been using the same toothpaste over and over again. And then they come back and they're like, this stuff is amazing. I got my holistic dentist on this and she's like, oh my God, this stuff is amazing. She's like, so they go and they'll do like plaque scrapes on people to find wow. out what kind of bacteria is in their mouth and what it could cause. So like looking for spirochetes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she, they haven't been able to find any on my husband since we started using this. Nice. And they found that um, people that had really bad buildup of um, like plaque and the bad bacteria and things like that, when they started using this toothpaste, it went down substantially. And for some of them, it even went away completely. So that's massive. Wow. Um, so that'll even cut down on your dental costs because less cavities, less chance of needing a root canal, less chance of implants, you name it. So love this toothpaste. Love, 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 love. It only comes in this flavor right now. It's orange. I like it. Some people do say they don't I like do. the, the Some flavor. Some people don't like it. I don't, yeah. I but like I, I essentially tell them suck it up because it's that good for you. Right. Yeah, I would agree of all the, of, uh, like that, you know, if we looked at hygiene being the number one thing to change, I would say the next thing would be your toothpaste. Mm -hmm. because those chemicals you're putting in there and then you're destroying the microbiome of your mouth and yeah. nobody nobody thinks of the microbiome of the mouth and one of the things that the good bacteria in your mouth does is break down so if you're not getting that breaking down of carbohydrates and sugars you're sending it on to the gut for it to ferment in the gut and now you've got a candida situation and or so it's it's just pivotal that people change their toothpaste and then you have acid reflux, but you right. don't really have acid reflux. Yeah. You've got food putrefying before it even, yeah. Right. So all sorts of things. So yeah. that's, this is one of the things that um, I use all the time. But the other thing um, that I absolutely love is my water pick. Um, so oh, tell me more. I, yeah, I don't, um, I don't do a whole lot of dental floss unless I'm traveling because most dental floss has gluten in it. And I'm gluten sensitive, so I avoid pretty much most dental floss. But I love my water pick. I put um, room temperature water in it half the time. Sometimes I'll add some of my Himalayan pink sea salt and let it sit and dissolve. And then I'll use it the next day to get in and just disinfect a little bit more. Um, but that's the next thing that I really love. My dentist will sometimes recommend putting like a drop or two of iodine. Um, if somebody has really bad um, like periodontal disease or something like that. Um, but I find that baking soda or a little bit of like Himalayan sea salt does the trick. And you just like, pow like it's, you're essentially power washing your gums. It's amazing. Um, so this. Do you, have a, do you have one brand you like? Is it, did you go onto Amazon and just get a water pick? Um, I just got mine from Costco, truthfully. <laughs> Costco, great. Okay. Um, Costco. Yeah, you know, and read the instructions before you use it because I seriously should write a blog on the first time that I used the power, the, the floss. <laughs> I didn't know that you had to have your mouth completely closed around it. And <laughs> you should have seen my mirror. Oh my gosh. My mirror in my face. I was just like, what in the heck? My husband came in and was like, what are you doing in here? I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's interesting that, that dental floss has gluten in it. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing I love is my um, metal tongue scraper. Oh. I love okay. my tongue scraper. Um, I, okay. 
Where do you get that? Thrive? Um, yeah, you, well, probably. Um, I just picked mine up at like PCC. So PCC is my natural co-op here in um, Washington. But I'm sure like Whole Foods or Sprouts or Natural Grocers or any of those would have um, a tongue scraper. But I really find that that helps keep um, the bad bacteria out and keeps your breath uh, fresh longer. Ah, but okay. Right, now, what do you think about for people who are doing the ketogenic diet? Do you, I mean, I know the acetone is in the breath. It's probably not sitting on the tongue, but do you think that would help those people? I do because a lot of times when people are fasting and doing ketogenic, your body is detoxing so heavily that you get like this film on your tongue. And so when you're fasting, you're not really supposed to brush. I will still use this because there's not much in here and I don't find that it um, gets my digestive enzymes going. So I don't feel that it causes me to have that type of reaction where it stimulates hunger. Um, but I will definitely be um, scraping my tongue out a whole lot more when I'm doing my fasting um, or if I'm doing like even a partial fast. So I've been doing a lot of partial fasts where um, just my calories have been much lower just to keep things going from the five day water fast that I did. And so I'm still scraping my tongue because I know that I still have some things going on with the cavitations that I had that keep coming up. So I just love it. I think it, it helps a whole ton. That's awesome. Okay, those are great ideas. And I we're gonna do a whole episode on the mouth and yeah. cavitation root canals and all of that I think is so important. That is that's another area that it's like people walk into their dentist, they have no idea the top level of toxicity that exists in there. And it's so frustrating again, you know, but when you stop and look at the epidemic of problems we have from infertility to thyroid to cancer, like yeah, it makes sense. We have a barrage of chemicals coming at us and it's not just in our food. No, and the sad part is most dentists don't even see right. it as an issue. Right. So we'll talk about that. Um, there's a whole lot of extra training, you know, in every profession to get um, to the underlying cause of whatever the heck is going on. So if you want to find the cause, you got to go to a specialist, guys. Um, yeah. That's the big thing. Yeah, yeah. and you got to find somebody who is willing to look and dig and, and see if they can, you know, where they can find, uh, like, you know, in, in a dental, I went to my dentist, re, uh, my old dentist recently and asked him uh, what he thought of mercury. And he was like, yeah, it's probably bad. And I said, do you still use it in here? And he said, uh, yeah, cause it's such a good filler for teeth. And I'm like, okay, what I heard in that answer is you weren't willing to think outside the box and find another one. And literally that, that was the last day my family went there as a, for him for being a dentist. Well, you know, and one of my really good friends is, so I have, well, I have a, a bunch of friends in the dental field. They actually wanted me to become a dentist. And I was like, heck no, <laughs> not my thing. And then guess what my focus is now that I just love researching the mouth, right? Figure that one out. Um, but a good friend of mine, um, they do a ton of mercury fillings. And the reason they do it is because they're in an area with extreme low income. And so they take Medicaid. And what does Medicaid cover? Medicaid and Medicare, it's silver fillings. And so she's like, I, I do it because I have to. And I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. yeah, and what's going and what does that do to her? What's she breathing in I mean, oh my god she's she's gonna be a mess and i tell her that all the time because they're not even set up for um clean um or safe removal or put in so she's i'm worried about her yeah okay let's see I, we have a couple of more ones um uh, water filters. So, you know, I, I always tell the story that the first time I found out about Dr. Pompa's heavy metal uh, work, I saw him speak at Cal Jam and he had just come back from Flint, Michigan. And he had talked about how there was so much lead, of course, as we all know, in Flint, Michigan, but that next to Flint, Michigan, the number one uh, most heavily toxified water system was in California and that California had lead. And I went home, I was like, I was in disbelief. I was like, no, not California. And I went home and I looked it up. You, and you guys can do the same thing. Go to your county, type in the water district for your county and they will tell you 
on on there's a every every county has to have a site that tells you what they've tested in the water sure enough lead um, they are now finding lead in the school district's water um, they have now as of a year ago they um, started adding fluoride to the water in my county and nobody knows and then again you know you have a person struggling with their health and they have no idea it's coming from their water yeah I agree 100% and we're going to talk about fluoride in another episode. Fluoride. No. It's another, yeah. Horrible. Um, yeah. And the problem is most people have no clue, right? So we drink it, we cook in it, our dogs drink it, we bathe in it. You know, we use our water all the time. We clean everything with it. And so what are, what did you do for your health or your house and then I'll tell you what we did in our rental. Okay, so we have, we have a filter that we drink water out of. Um, and the other thing we did in, it was, and hope, hopefully everybody knows this, is because we're an athletic family, everybody's taking water on the go, is we, all, we have all glass bottles. So everything's glass that water is stored in. Um, so we have, a, we have a water filter that connects. What I haven't changed is my shower filter or my shower head. But um, I've looked at, do you know, you, do you guys use Berkey water filters? No. It, so Berkey is pretty cool and it's got a big, there's like an, a, um, a big unit you can put on your uh, countertop and there's a unit you can put on your shower and it's, they have a specific fluoride one that takes fluoride out. And I need to, I need to order it. I just haven't, um, I, this is my year. What I try to do is every year I have like an emphasis that I'm going to do with my health. This is my year of the mouth. I've got to go get my cavitations. And so, but, um, so it's, a, it's definitely in my forefront that I've got to get it on my shower head. Yeah. So we got, um, I don't know the name of it right now. I do have one that just fits on the shower head. And I actually just told my husband yesterday, I think we need to replace it. I think it's past. Check out Berkey. I'm going to. Yeah. Um, so I did do that um, because like you, I live in an older house. It, I don't know what's been updated. It's nothing special, but you know, it has a great backyard and that's the important thing for me, truthfully. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But we did put a water filter um, in the kitchen. And so the water filter that we put is um, Epic. So A-P-E-C. Oh. Um, okay. And it's not super expensive, um, but that's what we use for everything. So I use that for cooking. I use it for drinking. I use it for my dogs. But before we did that, so when we first moved out here and we were in a short-term rental because we didn't know what um, area we wanted to live in, what I did was I went and bought huge glass kombucha, um, like maker kind of things, like just big glass bottles. It was five gallons. And I would take that to the store, fill it up with filtered water, and then bring it home. And the reason I got those ones was one, because it was glass, and two, it had a carrier. So it made it really easy to move when it was full. So um, if a water filtration system just isn't in the budget, go online, go on Amazon, look up glass kombucha, um, like jugs, and then you can, you know, get like an automatic pump kind of thing. Granted, you'll have to get one that's BPA free that you can just, um, get water to come out of it, or you can pour it into smaller containers, but that's an easy way to decrease your toxicity from water. Yeah, I, that, that is creative. And I think the Berkey ones are interesting too. So there are, and they're both, and both of those are more affordable because a whole house filter will cost you thousands of dollars. Whereas this will cost you, cost you less than, you know, a couple hundred dollars. The, the way you're saying is less than a hundred dollars. So yeah, super think, smart. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, the, the kombucha things, I think I paid $50 for two of them and yeah. Um, we drink a lot of water. We give our dogs that water too. And so we would, two of them would last us a week. So I'd have to go fill it up every week, but no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did we talk, we talked about uh, laundry de detergent. Did we kind talk of. About um, guys, avoid fabric softener. Yeah. It's the fabric softener. The, the thing that makes it's a lot, it, you know, it's a lot of the smells. This is why I love essential oils. They're game changers. It's those toxic smells. You think they smell great, but they're really toxifying you. Perfume. They are. Yep. Um, so what we use instead, we use uh, dryer balls. 
and we'll put a couple drops of essential oils on it and they last forever. Okay. You do got to be careful though, because if you dry your clothes too long with them, they will get staticky. So you just don't want to like over dry them or like keep, because I sometimes get lazy. I'll be like, oh, it's not quite dry yet. Cause I just don't want to take it out and fold it. So I'll start it again. Yeah. It will get a little staticky if you do that too much, but they're fabulous. What, Love it. What oil do you use? What essential oil flavor? Yeah, it depends. So um, one of them I'll use is purification. Um, it's just very uplifting. Yeah. I might use um, like lemon or like a mixture. So like one of the blends that I have is from Sage, which is a company in Canada. You guys have it in California though, you lucky buggers. Um, but, um, liquid sunshine is one that I really like. It's very uplifting. Um, okay. so those are the ones that I typically use in the laundry. Now, if you want something a little stronger, because my girlfriend, her, her husband, their husband and wife chiropractic team as well. And she's like, he complains to me all the time that his clothes don't smell clean enough. I'm like, just put a stronger essential oil on the balls and seal them in there and it'll be fine. And she texted me the, like a week later and she goes, Yep, he thinks I changed the detergent again, and I'm like, <laughs> "That's awesome." So that's yeah. And, 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 I think the interesting thing about clothes is it's the same thing as as your plate. Like you're putting if it has a chemical that you're washing in it and you're dried, and now you're putting that on you. It's on you all day long. So remember that it's the it's the the con, the continuous action of the of the toxin. The same thing with the plates. If you're putting your plate in a hot dishwasher and you're putting, you know, a chemical detergent in there, now it, there's a film on your plate and you're eating off of that. Like it, once you see that, you go, oh my God, where else are these chemicals? It's just everywhere. Right. And I think the big thing is your skin is the biggest organ system. So whatever it's exposed to, it gets absorbed. And yeah your skin will tell you when there's a problem. You know, that's one of the reasons why we get breakouts, why we get rashes, why we get acne. Your body's telling you there's something going on. And it's just a matter of trying to figure out where that something is. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I got to tell you that this is like one of those episodes that I think I have all of my patients listen to because there's so many hidden toxins that as we coach people, uh, I don't know about you, but there's so much that we're working on with diet and supplements and detoxing, and it's hard to, to, to remember all the pieces to tell people. So this is the kind of episode that I think we can really give to patients, give to people. Hopefully, if you resonate with this, you share it out because it's life-saving. It's people have to know this. Well, and the other thing too, guys, so, you know, when you're listening to these, First, join our Women in Wellness Facebook page so that we can create some interaction, some back and forth conversation. And you can let us know what is it that you want more of? Do you want more um, details on specific products? Do you want more details on specific ingredients or how to make certain products? Because some of the products I don't even buy. I just make it because it's easier and I know exactly what is going to be in it. So join the page and let us know what it is that you guys are looking for so that we can give it to you because we're giving you guys the things that we think you should know or that we want you to know, but there might be other things that we didn't even think about that you're like, hey, this is something that really interests me or what about this? Or better yet, if you guys have any tips. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, yeah. Yeah, there's such a, there's so many options out there, right? And a, a lot of do, uh, do it yourself kind of things. So yeah. uh, now use the Facebook group to share because I think that's important. That way we can all see that, that it's so much easier than we may realize. Right. And if you're doing something and we're like, hey, actually, you know what? Take this ingredient out and switch it with this one. It'll make it even better for you. We might be able to give you some tips or pointers to improve it even one step higher. And you gave me today one, two, three, four, five new things I'm going to add in. So thank you. This was well, awesome. I got three things from you that I got to go research, and especially that NASA indoor plant thing. Goodness. And that water you, filter. I'm excited. You know what else? Have you read The Dental Diet? The Dental Diet? No. Nope. Go, no. Read the, go read The Dental Diet for your mouth obsession. 
Um, you will love it. It's written by a holistic dentist down in um, Australia. I will. There, I've been doing so much actual research, research. So reading through like research papers. Oh my gosh. Right. Um, yeah, this is a little more user friendly than that, but you'll love it. I mean, you're going to agree with 95% of it, but there's some interesting things in there. Uh, cool. He talks about the immune system of the mouth and how that there's an immunity in there and the nutrients you need to keep the immunity strong. So we, we definitely need to do mouth soon. It'll be really interesting. Yeah, there's, there's so much that we can sit here and talk about. And we could talk for hours on toxins, hours. So. Okay, thank you. And next week, hopefully, we'll have Dr. Sonia back after two weeks of vacation. I'm not sure uh, if she'll be able to engage her brain or not, but uh, she'll be back with us. So hey, I bet you she'll be so relaxed that she'll um, be more in tuned than we are. We're going to be like, Perhaps. whoa. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe we should talk about like meditation and yoga next week. <laughs> Let her leave yes, that one. Actually, let's do that. I think yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, something that everybody should do, and we can talk about our practices, and um, it's a practice. That's exactly yeah. it, right? Awesome. So, perfect. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll fill her in. Okay, Wonderful. thank you. Bye. Bye.